What's poppin' Tisa of the T Squad? So listen, I know I'm late. All right. I'm late for this review. My bad, but better late than never. Um, and then better late than not getting it. So it just is what it is. Put a ring on it. This is season four, episode two. What's the stuff? So the episode continues where I left off at. And that was with Dr. Stacy. Um getting Dunbar and his daughter all the way together uh, because Dunbar and his daughter still don't get it. And the reason why I'm calling Chance Dunbar's daughter is because that's basically what this is. Dunbar is looking for a, dumb, a, a doormat and Dunbar is looking for a woman to just be barefoot and pregnant. And that's just her only role in the house. Barefoot, pregnant, suck his dick whenever he asks for it, pop out a kid or two whenever he wants it, make sure that the house is clean, rub his feet, uh, rub his shoulders, and all of the rest of this stuff. Like, that's what he wants his wife to be. That's what he thinks that a woman's place is, is to just be there to serve her man um, 1,010%. You know, that's, that, that's what he wants. Um, one, you're not going to get that from chance, all right? You're not finna get that from Chance. If that's what you're looking for, Dunbar, you need to go in ahead and cut your losses, which means by cutting Chance loose, because that's never going to be Chance. I don't care what Chance tells you or how Chance try to try to smooth it out. That ain't what it's ever going to be. All right. I don't know why Chance is searching for like a daddy type of situation, because to let her tell it, she got her daddy in her life. It was a mama that she didn't have. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know why she's looking for this type of thing with Dunbar, um, but I mean, is it stability? Because it's like I say, girl, don't nobody know him. He is a washed up football player that is actually living real modest. All right. So I, I, I mean, I don't know. I need to know more about Chance, Chance's background or whatever. And, you know, dig deep down into her psyche because I'm looking at the shit the same way Doc State's looking at it. And it's, it's, Whatever. So Joya talks about her date with Kyle and Josh is telling her about there being no boundaries, but she did let him know about her about her wiping crumbs off his beard. Um, and I, li- I listen, I like Joya. I think she's real beautiful. And I like Joshua, too. I think he real cool. Or I think he real handsome. Um, but let's be clear, Joya, you 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 was being petty in that. You was being petty in that moment, and then you got brought back down to, to, to reality when he reminded you in a really nice way, oh, okay, well, when I go out on my date and I meet my date, since that's what we're doing, and you know, whatever the case may be, I can go in the hand and kiss your hand. And your reason is as to why he's not supposed to kiss her hand, but you got while you're getting yours kissed is ridiculous to me. Because, yeah, Kyle was a single man kissing your hand, but bitch, you're not single. <laughs> you not single. So, I mean, if if that's the route that we're going, then Joshua should feel a way about him kissing your hand and then you turning around wiping crumbs off his damn mouth. But whatever. Because again, I like Joya. I ain't gonna get her too much. But y'all stop. You was being petty in that moment. Let's just call a spade a spade. So Catherine talks about her date with Mark and how she's still keeping the flowers that he gave her, but she's keeping it on Ricky's side of the bed so it could remind him to be more romantical with her at times. And I gag. I'm like, Catherine, you keep the flowers from a man that you chose not to go on the second date no more? I mean, I hear what you're saying, but I think it'll sting a lot more if you chose to keep Mark as a date. And I really don't get why you didn't choose Mark as a date. I mean, I get your feelings, but I do understand what Dr. Stacy was saying too. Like you can't live in the past. All right. You got to live in the moment. All right. Because Mark's situation ain't Ricky's situation. It, it ain't. And Ricky's situation ain't Mark's situation. Yeah, it sounds the same, but I'm on this show. It's a complete, completely different dynamic than what y'all got going on around there. And I don't know, friend, I, I think you probably let Mark go a little bit too quickly. That's just my opinion. But I will say this. You do got a type because Mark and your ex-boyfriend that we see in the next video, they kind of similar in a lot of ways. 
They're kind of similar in a lot of ways. I'm kind of shocked that Ricky made the cut, but it just is what it is. Shout out to Catherine, by the way, because she followed me on Instagram. So I appreciate you for watching the reviews, love. Moving on. Um, so the ladies all decide to go on dates with new men. Um, none of them wanted to uh, be with them or whatever the case may be. And Dunbar, I'm going to need for you to grab a life like really, really quickly. Like what I didn't like was how Dunbar was sitting up and there was saying, well, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a successful brother and, you know, <laughs> I ain't got no felonies or nothing like that. Well, neither did Phil. All right. And Phil is a lot more younger than you are. And be clear, um, Chance. Why you talking about you want to date, you wanted, you wish that he was more mature. So I, I wish you were more mature too. Like, in my opinion, you and Phil, like, can y'all equally yoked if that's the case so y'all can learn and grow together. Because, again, I say, Dunbar, you think too highly of yourself, baby. Don't get me wrong. I think you're real handsome in a KC from Jodeci kind of way. But child, again, you are a washed up NFL player that is living real modest. You understand me? You are no different than none of the other 40 somethings, because that's what you give, that I see walking around the streets of New York every day. Ain't no difference in you, child. None. Moving on. Um, so Josh's date, Josha, is getting ready for his date with Celine. Shout out to Celine. She's gorgeous. And I appreciated Joya's approach at the whole thing. She won't bother. She didn't give too much. She didn't do too much. She didn't give the whole insecurity type of thing. She greeted Celine. She made her feel warm, made her feel welcome. She sought him out. She kissed her man. Girl, just, just hand back at a decent hour. That's all I had. Go on. Get him out of here. You know what I'm saying? That's the way that I wished a lot of lot of folk would take it because it's just you say you're not bothered, but then you go above and beyond like Dunbar and his daughter did, and it was just too much. Moving on, um, so they go out to eat for their date or whatever, and they got a lot of similarities. She's into zodiac and numerology and astrology and meditations and all of the rest of this stuff. So is he? Um, you know they both speak Spanish. Okay, Espanolos, or whatever the case may be, which was real cute. I actually enjoyed their little date. They had a little cozy, cute little date with one another. Like, you know, it it, it won't too it won't too much of nothing. It, it it was perfect the way that it was. Excuse me. Uh moving on. So Ricky's date is Sheila. Oh Sheila, shout out. Um so Ricky got a house full of damn people with his girlfriend. I think he said his mama lit there, the daddy lit there, the sister lit there, his brother blow through there from time to time. And and Catherine is like, why is all of these motherfuckers in my house? I want my own. Well, listen, Catherine didn't say all that, but I'm saying it for her. She's sick of it at this point. She's sick of it. She is. She want her own space and all the rest of it. And this is what I want to know. And listen, I ain't trying to get all of y'all business, but we we dabble in details right here in this channel. So did y'all move in with his parents? Like, is that his parents' house? Or does Ricky, you know what I'm saying? Is he, do he work by day and is a secret kingpin at night? And, you know, he's working and providing to make sure that everybody and his family got some place to come or whatever because to let him tell it, all he does is work and take care of you. His word, sis, don't get mad, Catherine, don't get mad with me, sis. That's what he said. He work all the time to help to, to take care of you in the house, and that's why he doesn't always do the little thing. It's the little things, okay, that NDRE was talking about down to her first hour. So, because again, I like Catherine. I I'm, I'm I ain't trying to. Do, I, I'm just whatever. So, <laughs> so um, her date comes. Oh, Sheila comes. Sheila is a tomboy by nature, and I could tell that. But she's actually really beautiful. Her damn self, she really is. Um, I think they say she's part Caribbean or something. I like Sheila. 
I like old Sheila. She she seemed real cool. She really do. Um, so Ricky tells this story about how, you know, Catherine really doesn't trust. Or not so much doesn't trust, but maybe she has some type of issues with the co-parenting situation with Ricky and his baby mama. Uh, because Ricky talks about how, you know, he was watching his son while the baby mama was working. I guess she's trying to get into the music industry or whatever. And I guess she goes out to nightclubs and, and performs or whatever. And he talks about how one night she didn't come home until real late or early in the morning or whatever. So he just stayed around there down to her house and Catherine had an issue with it. I'm going to be real with you, Ricky. I don't understand why the little boy just couldn't came to your house. I mean, if you have a stable place to stay, you got a car and, and all of the rest of that stuff. I don't get why you just had to camp out on her couch. Like, why not just leave her a message? Hey, it's getting late. So look, I'm about to go on ahead. I'm taking Junior with me or the jet with me. I'm about to lock up the crib or whatever. And you could just pick him up in the morning. I mean, and it, it, it and it has nothing to do with trust. It has everything to do with respect and boundaries. Because I'm more than sure if Catherine had a baby daddy and she came home and told you some stuff like that, you would feel away, Ricky. I know you would. Don't even act like that. So it's like, while I hear what you're saying, I don't hear what you're saying. Like, I don't know. That, that's, that is a little strange, Ricky. Because, I mean, you could have just did the same thing to your house. Bring a little boy around there to your house. You live with your mom and your daddy. So I'm more than sure they'd love to be there with their grandson and vice versa. Like... The ain't there too. The uncle there too. Like, whatever, Rick, y'all let you have it. So Dunbar getting ready for his date with Crystal. Shout out to Crystal. Um, and um, I gotta tell you something. Crystal and Dunbar are one of the same. Dunbar wants a submissive doormat, and Crystal don't mind being a submissive doormat, all in the name of the Lord. So I mean, fine, Crystal. I, I, that's really all I got for you, sis, because you you was draining me. I, I mean. Oh, I want to be the submissive one for my husband. Oh, I want to, you know, let him make all the decisions. And I want him to make all the decisions for the house and make the decisions for me and for the children and, and control every aspect of my life. And every time he tells me to jump, I'm going to yell how high. And every time he tells me to suck it, I'm going to ask him, do you want me to spit it out or swallow and all the rest of the stuff? I guess, Crystal, if that's the way you want to live your life, friend, hey. That's what Dunbar wants, so y'all a match made in heaven. The gag is, I kind of go for Crystal and, and Dunbar more than I go for Dunbar and Chance, because Chance is going to annoy me. Especially from what I see in the next episode, Chance is really going to annoy me. Annoying me to the point where I might get disrespectful with her ass. And I don't really want to do that, because I don't know her like that. But she... I, moving on. Um... And both of y'all are the same. He did way too much when it came to Phil, and you did way too much when it came to Crystal. Again, I would love for these women to pull a Joya. Listen, just as long as he come back home the way he left here, that's all I ask. Now go on. Like, that need to be the attitude with all of y'all. Like, all of the insecurities and all that stuff, be secure in your relationships, child. Like, don't let the other person see that, see you sweating and that they, whatever. Um, moving on. So Dr. Stacy does her 101 with um, Dunbar and his daughter. Um, so Dunbar doesn't like the fact that he, that um, Chance seeks advice or counseling or, or, or whatever from her dad before she goes to him. You know, he pulled that out of his ass to have an issue with her. You know, he don't like that. He he feels like he the man and that's his woman and all of the rest of this stuff that she's just supposed to forget to forget that she has a father, apparently. Um but Chance still wants to sit over here and try to act. Then he gonna say he don't know how to love 
uh, independent, secure women. Of course you don't because you're used to dealing with raggedy hoes that just really wanted you to take care of them and all the rest of this stuff while you were still in the league and you were still somebody. Um, so that makes sense as, as to why you can't possibly seem to love a woman that just don't need you like that. I think if I was a straight male, <laughs> I personally would want an independent, strong black woman that can do for herself, even though she could call me, she ain't got her. I wouldn't find nothing wrong with that. To me, I would think that's more of an attraction and more of a turn on that you're not always a damsel in distress. You know what I mean? Like, what happened to the days when men wanted that? Like, it, it, it seems that, and it's always. <sighs> Listen, that's it. That's all. I ain't got no more to get y'all because I'm about to get annoyed. Like, Chance and this foolishness with Dunbar and her critical thinking skills and Dunbar and his BS and, and his. And it's not that Dunbar, let me make this very clear. I don't think Dunbar is a bad guy. And I don't necessarily think that he's a bad person. It's just he has a warped way of thinking how a marriage or relationship is supposed to go. And it's just, and, and, but, but look at who you dating. It would seem to me that Chance would have never gotten anything from you because Chance is not that type of woman. I got, got guess, child. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got. I ain't got no more to get y'all. Y'all drop down in the comments. Let me know what y'all thought about Friday tonight's episode. And um, yeah, child. Till next time, I'll holler at you. Bye.